the word of god is alive and powerful sharper than any two edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart all scripture is god breathed and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction and for instruction in righteousness that the man of god might be mature thoroughly furnished unto all good works study to show thyself a prudent to guard a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth or very accurately handling this very great unique infallible and inerrant great word of truth glory be to my ave sitkanu to the highest and peace be to be the man can on this earth to those who believe in my lord and savior jesus christ and the great peace of our lord and savior jesus christ bestowed upon them who walk in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit by daily growing up in the knowledge of our god and declaring to this world the love of god the father in keeping all the mandates and the commandments given to us in nothing to be ashamed when he appear in his presence but in everything to be thankful to the lord and for his glory because we should not be like the elder sister aloha referring to samaria and then calling itself to be in the jerusalem for ahiloba but in return understanding the truth and the word of god to make our lives to know and to realize this great mystery doctrine of the church age for which we have been bestowed not to be the pattern and the example of the israelites who went along in the sins of their ignorance and arrogance not to give heed and to give the glory of our lord to the praise of him which is due unto him but in return went along though they were been called in psalms 46:4 the rivers of the stream shall flow in the city of god and the tabernacles of our lord are always holy the rivers now is nothing but the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit where every believer has been told in john chapter 7 verses 37 through 39 out of him will flow the rivers of lord god the holy spirit and that tabernacle is the holy temple of the lord and right now we in the church age the tabernacle are we our lord's temple and we have been told and mandated that out of us will flow the great glory of our lord and we have been called being joined with our lord being one spirit not one flesh but one spirit to glorify our lord to the maximum in which we have been kept alive on this earth for the purpose of our lord and the reason why we have been kept alive to glorify him to the maximum is to taste his good will the rat son the rat son where we have been told when you walk according to the fellowship of our lord by keeping his word for which we have been told in john 17:6 they have kept thy word therefore i sanctify them through thy word through the truth and that is the primary purpose why we come every day over here not to go astray in the paths of false teachings not to listen to those things which are contrary to the mind of Christ by following your gimmicks and tricks if it were not the yahweh the revelation of the name of our lord which has been given for that word and it's not an instrument of magic where today the people are using it in the prosperity gospel charismatic gospel we wouldn't have even been needed to be over here on this earth the primary purpose and the sole reason why we have been kept over here is to resolve this angelic conflict the great solid reason for which you have been kept alive is to resolve this angelic conflict to get to nothing those things of this earth who are thinking they are wisdomized they are having their knowledge they are having their great power either in the realm of the greek philosophy of their love of wisdom the jews religion oriented thoughts looking for sign and in fact when the roman catholic where the romans came along to teach in the pagan order of worship in discipline and power the world which thinks they are having some base the world they think which are having much wisdom the world which they think going forth through greater things of their morality can train them up can cause them up can make them to understand and they think they are having a base but when we read john chapter 12 verses 29 and go on till to the john chapter 17 verses last verse it really gives us a great inspiration to teach and to be how grateful our lord has chosen us to have that peace of our god how gratefully has chosen us though we are baseless and worthless people by giving us his word and calling us to witness the truth so that our father in heaven is the farmer and we are the 
twigs of that great wine tree and that wine tree is nothing but our Christ our Lord and if we bear into him and abide into him we shall get much fruit therefore in Galatians 3 27 it stands written for us if you have been baptized with Christ our Lord put on Christ and Romans 13 14 teaches to us if Christ our Lord has been put upon you so that you shall not fulfill the lustful patterns of the old sin nature then you will try out to become a great witnesses for his truth Job 29 13 like the way Job was and then the priests Psalms 132 when we read they were the witnesses they are put on Christ now as an individual believer you can tell what I can do as an individual believer you are being called to witness like a great ambassador to the Lord and for that reason every individual believer has been given at least one minimum one spiritual gift and I'm talking about the permanent of the spiritual gifts not the temporary one and those spiritual gifts have been mentioned further in Ephesians chapter 4 by the same grace effect so that it could produce a character of Christ in them not coming here to be served but coming here to serve the Lord but here today's Christendom we find the Kleptes, Lestes, Mistotes, Tupas, Canapes, Tiflos and Shervos oriented minded pastors who come and love here to be served. Who start up the ministry for money. Who consider the vain and wake things to be great in their life. But those ambassadors wherewith Christ our Lord has chosen he has given at least one minimum one spiritual gift. And when Christ our Lord commissioned them in Matthew 25 15, we read how they have been using those talents, those gifts wherewith we have been given through the eternal life by faith alone in Christ alone when we believe upon our Lord because it is a gift of our Lord. The same thing mentioning back in Ephesians chapter 2 and Ephesians chapter 3 by the grace of God I have been given this gift, Colossians chapter 1, to teach to you this dispensation. And in this dispensation of the church age, dividing between the Israel and the church and the millennium realm of the eschatological events, the greater if you are not able to understand the difference between Aloha and Ahiloba, even the Ahiloba, the anger sister, which is the church, which is nothing but comparison to the Samaria, where they have been told to worship in spirit and in truth, because the Samaritans will not go to worship in the mount, says John chapter 4. But now we are referring the Samarians to the Gentiles. We have been called to worship in spirit and in the controlling mentoring ministry of Ladgar, the Holy Spirit from the biblical truth. We are not here to drink the leftover cup of Aloha. The way they profane the law of our Lord. The way they profane the temple of Christ our Lord. Who went along to give their mere children to be absolutely as a burning sacrifice. That is the straight thought from Satan. Human sacrifice has been originated by Satan, not by our Lord, our God. He tells in Jeremiah chapter 7 to teach, those things haven't even come to my mind. So you may ask what it is. You should be called as a great friend to the Lord, then you give Abraham test. Your Abraham test is nothing but to see that Lord our God is able to multiply though they were entering into 70 as stars of the heaven he multiplied them as they have been sent now and who was the seed cause the seed cause was Abraham through the legal one Sarah not Ishmael the illegal one the slave not the free woman and from Isaac we find our Lord, our God, being named after his name, I am the Lord God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. What a privilege it is for us to understand about those things. And who was the root cause? Isaac. And from there on what we learn about his life. Not to give as a human sacrifice, but to look unto his examination whether he really obedient and is really obedient to look and to enmark himself in the list of faith. But Aloha and Ahiloba destroyed themselves by even giving their male children for to be a human sacrifice unto the Lord. As we were noticing the things in yesterday's tape, why our Lord God has chosen the church to be the theological seminary and why our Lord, has, Lord our God has used the baseless and worthless things of this man and been running this program over 2000 years ago to prove his character, to prove his integrity. That it is no way equivalent for you, for our Lord to be being a creator, to fight with the creation, the fall out Satan. Satan has nothing. 
Therefore, we are being placed over here on this earth to get back an answer to the Satan to tell, yes, we are here to judge the angels. 1 Corinthians 6.3 to put to shame not only the things pertaining to this world in the form of your flesh because upon all flesh authority has been given to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ says the word in John chapter 14 and 15 I have authority over the all flesh exousian authority and we get it by daily learning in the word of God by daily growing up in the mind of Christ and by daily building up in the realm to be called as a temple of our Lord our God our Savior and we learn it and we acquire it and we possess it. So that the mind of this man is nothing. Zero, zero, point, zero, zero. Far less we can think they have been beating us, they have been overtaking us, they have been certainly powdering us into pieces. No, no way, dear brethren. It is you in return. Vengeance belongs to my Lord and he pays back them. But the problem with us is, you are not able to understand for what reason you will be coming to these theological seminaries, which is nothing but your church. Not you literally go to the theological seminaries and you go there and learn up in your Bible doctrine. No, every church is a theological seminary. One time I used to think, when they were being taught to Robert Bunker, Thieme and other things, the way they have been studied in the theological seminaries, the way they write their thesis, and when we read the systematic theology, particularly written by Lewis Perry Chaffer and Louis Berkhoff, so much of vast information when and how they have to teach. If they have been qualified to be a pastor, are they teaching that? Is it not necessarily equivalent to everyone of the church age of a believer for whom this inherent ability of hyperic parosis has been given will be inherent to learn those things, will be having that capacity to learn about those things? And when and how they have to teach? That's what I used to think. But now we have been called the church to be the theological seminary. It is not a weekly assembly where you come there and show forth your club's issues. Every day is a graduation process that has to go there. As we are looking, Christ our Lord being our absolute pattern, we have seen his life from the age of his birth, in his virgin realm, till to the age of his ministry, from there on till to the age of his resurrection and ascension. His virgin birth has been counted for us as a spiritual birth. The sad part is when they will wake up to understand when Christ our Lord told in John chapter 13 verse 7 what I do to you now you know not but you shall know hereafter if that is the fate of many believers who wake up in the heaven to realize what they have lost for what they have been chosen for what was the work and how they have to be given in the Lord our God our Savior the things pertaining to Christ if that was the matter for him, if that was the matter of thing to him. And if they don't wake up to realize what a great privilege and what a great process it is in Christ to be there for our Lord and with beat our Lord. They have lost their greatest wealth in Christ. Such greatest wealth, never you can understand. Never you can grow up to realize. Never you can look to consider such greatest wealth of all time. The Israelites were also not been given much. But the sad part wherewith we see the church age beginning and ending up in apostasy all the time. When we look back in the church age began after the Constantinople who came along to give us this 50 copies of the Bible again in the 400 AD. Furthermore, at each and every nick and corner of the world, we were able to find men who are not able to take in. Though there were many people like Tishindorf, though there were many people like Tyndale, though there were many people who came along to give their lives to translate the Bible in our own English languages, yet we couldn't find them accurately till the point of 15th century. And when the Reformation movement came along, we could find the KJV version coming in 16th century. And yet from there we see a great downfall. No difference between the pagans, no difference between the Christians, no difference between those ritual-minded, oriented, nominal Christians. Oh, when they will know the things which Christ our Lord has declared for them, does not the word say in John chapter 17, the last verse, I have been perceiving make, to make them to understand, and I will yet make them to understand the things. Agnorizo. I have declared thy name unto them, O Lord. I will yet declare thy works unto them, and thy word unto them. 
And when they will declare from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21, the completed canon of Scripture. When they will make a lesson to teach them up, to train them up for the privilege for which they have been obtained in Christ. Do you know what a privilege it is to be for you, a believer in the Lord, irrespective of your racial discrimination? And do you know what a privilege it is for you to be in the church, a biblical, spiritual, controlled church, using the authority of the Word of God like a mirror, and searching your inner mind day in and day out diligently to see if there is any offensive way, but rather leading in the way of our Christ, our Lord, do you know what is that church? The outcalled one being assembled there, not for destruction being coming together, but rather in return by the spiritual ministerial gift given to a male pastor teacher to profit them, to give that which is of a great advantage yes, directly or indirectly. Directly through the verbal communication literally present, indirectly through the videos and tapes and publications as when, as when one I have been the recipient of the tapes and publications of Robert Bunker Thieme. That indirectly being that spiritual gift to be profitable for me. That's what it has been called. You come over here with the ministerial gifts given to you to profit. And we have been called not just for the ministerial gift for which you could be profit, but in return you have been baptized by the fellowship of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, being baptized at the, at the first time, let God the Holy Spirit, 1 Corinthians 12, 1, 2, 3. And over here now being put on Christ. And witnessing like Job. Further witnessing in your priesthood. Further witnessing Luke 24, 48 and 49 to be the witnesses for this truth. So that the entire nation can come to know not only over here, even in the entire angelic realm I'm speaking about. From the largest to the smallest. Everyone shall bow down, every knee shall bow down, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ our Lord is the only true Lord of our God. And we have to have the same mind of Christ our Lord for us, having his pattern for us, starting from his virgin birth, quoting equivalent to our spiritual birth, moving there till the age of 12, the way how we reasoned along in the churches, and from there till the age of 12 we should be grown up. To get every thought into captivity for Christ that this world is not enough for us to witness. And by the age of 30, there is a great mystery where the people want to look and think from the age of 12 to age of 30 where Christ our Lord was. But Isaiah chapter 50 verses 1 through 4 tells, wherever he was, he was teaching us the word of God every day and he was being graduated. He was been taking his process for preparation for the ministry. And yet there are people who will come to the churches today to say, once we have been anointed by the Lord to have the spiritual gifts is enough and we shall stand there and we shall speak some words and that's enough. But the word of God tells speaking those words is not enough but making them to perceive the mind of Christ is required and not only just before the world but not only just before the church but to the entire angelic and to the realm of this physical earth where we survive, to the entire world, to the cosmos thinking to be in very simple terms. And if you are not able to witness for them, you are a traitor unto my Christ. And witnessing what? The glory that which is due unto him before the foundation of the world. If this mystery doctrine as per 1 Corinthians 2, 7, it has been reserved and kept for us before the foundation of the world. And Ephesians chapter 1 tells to us, Before the foundation of the world I have been chosen you for my work. And in John chapter 17 when we read, The glory that which is due unto the Lord before the foundation of the world, then when we shall pay them back. You are not even able to pay that which has been established now in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit to be daily growing up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine and not to become kleptes, lastes, misthotes, tupos, canapes, tiflos and sure us oriented minded pastors but in return being faithful enough by putting on Christ our Lord and training every believer to teach that the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking but in return when you can judge yourself and attest to yourself that you shall not be fault into the realm of many people being weak, sick and till to the point of death but rather in return you will be absorbed Absorbing the documents examination of Christ and you shall look and partake in the elements of our Lord to do with the due respect of his work on this earth. And yet many people don't understand why they are weak, sick and to the point of death. Why the youth perishes, why the kids perish, why the Sunday school perishes, where there is no proper revolution of the word of God, there the people will perish. It is not by any other method. The word of God proclaims all the time the truth, the truth, the truth. The mind of Christ is the truth. The infallible and inerrant word of God being exegeomite from the original languages of the scriptures is the truth. 
and that great bona fide gift given to us by rightly dividing the word of the Lord when we labor along enough to the soil and to the mud for where we have been kneeling down in his presence and being trained to honor his word above his name. That's our life. And not your scrap pieces of paper or, or your metal shells that could count into our account so that we could be wealthy enough on this earth. What wealthy enough on this earth you can take after you die. Did not Alexander the Great told to you by his exemplifying ways of putting out his hands from the coffin box? What he will do here on this earth? Have you acquired that which is given for us in Deuteronomy 29, 29? The things that have been revealed for us over here on this earth, they belong to us and they belong to us. And literally they belong to us as long as we have breath in our nostrils. And not even able to understand the calling in the Lord. Not even able to realize your purpose in Christ. Not even able to realize you are born again, the, the purpose for which you have been called to be absolutely available to the praise of his glory and his grace, so that none shall be departed except the son of perdition. Though he partook in the elements of our Lord, he went along to sin. When he went along, then in John chapter 14, we really learn a great lessons for us. If a believer could master the things from, Gen from John chapter 13, 14 till to the John chapter 17 the entire verses you would really wake up to realize what is he doing on this earth what Christ our Lord our God kept and prayed for us and in the past tense our Lord tells they shall they have kept thy word in John chapter 17 verse 6 what a privilege it is for us to understand those things they have kept thy word kept thy word literally it's a past tense and we are being Guaranteed by our God the Father through his Son to tell to God the Father they shall abide in me and yield much fruit And we shall be called as our friends to our Lord Because whatsoever we do according to his will we shall be called as friends of our Lord And what the word tells for us Whether you believe it or not dear brethren The great word of God tells they have kept thy word. And what word they have kept? The things that have been yet to be revealed in the heaven. The things where Apostle Paul tells. Very specifically for us. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. The ineffable word. The unspeakable word. I have not been given permission to talk about them. Are you at least worried what they could be? You haven't even finished the groundwork. Far less you can think upon entering yourself to the spiritual combat. Those things will be revealed for us only when we die. Don't ever think in your visions and your dreams. You can come and talk about those things. If anyone is thinking in those terms, he should be totally out of mind. The things where Apostle Paul has been told for us. So that he should not go above the revelations given to him, buffeted with a thorn in the flesh. As he was having a greater temptation towards his Jews, he said, If myself I am being accused, if not I have been cursed, let it be in Romans chapter 9. But then too, I want to say, my brethren, in that realm, if it would have been taken the revelation of the word of God, and if it would have not been put a thorn in his flesh, he would have taught us even that revolution. Let him be accused, that's what he would have taught. But the Rima declarations of the heaven wherewith you have been given on this earth, which is nothing but from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21, the completed kind of scripture, they belong to us, and they are your property, and they are your possession. And Lord our God, if he seems fit, the things of the heaven not to be revealed right now. And when we go back home, we need to learn about those things. Then he knows why he has kept it. Not to get your mind being blown up. And you may think how we can teach from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21. You cannot teach them. It is by the Spirit of God who trains you up to teach them. For which Christ our Lord tells through Apostle Paul in Philippians chapter 3, verses 10 and following till to the verse number 13. It is not that I apprehend, but Christ our Lord has apprehended me. 
and therefore one thing I do because I have been apprehended by the Lord forgetting those things which are behind and looking forward for those things which are ahead and what are those things which are ahead the things of the heaven yet staying in the flesh trying to put one step in the realm of your own sin nature and crying to grieving and squelch and, li and lying to the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit and on the other end trying to put your step on the right uh, on one end by to be thinking that by confession of your sins through rebound getting back into fellowship of him and walking in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit living in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit and thinking that you can yield unto the fruit of the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit and constantly battling from your old sin nature to Lord God the Holy Spirit and from Lord God the Holy Spirit to old sin nature and in spite of that because of the characteristics of your old sin nature which you have Christian moral degeneracy and Christian immoral degeneracy or trends towards legalism and trends towards antinomianism you battle there along itself in the area of weakness and the area of strength and men love enough to look upon the second advent of our Christ our Lord men love to look upon the millennium rule men love to look upon such and such prophecies when they shall be fulfilled but never they are able to look upon their life in the church age the right method of a Christian way of life. Therefore, they do not even bother enough to think the glory that we just do unto the Lord before this creation could be made, that we are been here to produce it back to our Lord. For that reason, we have been given this indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. For that reason, every believer has been made the temple of God, the now and temple of Christ, not the Hieros. For that reason we have been warned by telling an example of Ezekiel chapter 23 between the two sisters of Aloha and Ahiloba, where Ahiloba went along more worse than Aloha the elder sister. Israelites are far better than us, whether you can believe it or not, because they did not have the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and yet they were abiding faithful in their work for which they have been called, and we can call them the true people of Christ. In every generation, Lord our God knows how and who will be the true faithful, for, true faithful men for his work. Daniel found his innocence. Abraham proved his faithfulness in the Lord. David walked in the integrity to be called as a man after God's own heart. Jeremiah proclaimed, even it is, it is still to the point of his death, not diminishing even a single word, but he went along to tell the truth. Such great men who have been given as an example for us in the Bible. And they were all Old, old Testament saints. And therefore they have been given for us as an example to follow their paths, not in the realm of their own destruction, moving out from the word of God and getting apostatized and declining from the spiritual truth and entering into spiritual wickedness. Her paths are constantly evil, her paths are constantly astray, leading you to die in that thoughts of your old sin nature. But when we come to the New Testament, what do we have? We have Christ our Lord as our role model. Apart from Christ, we don't have anything else. Therefore, you have been given the two offices right now in the church age. The office of your priesthood, the office of your kingship, so that being believer in the Lord, whenever you confess your sins, for which you have been not having time to waste along in your reasonings, to waste along in your methods, To tell, I have to go to a priest to confess to the confession room or confession box, like the Roman Catholic popery what they have established. And the greatest evil that could ever hit the Christendom is the popery. The popery of this Roman Catholics. And right now in the church age, the greatest evil which is going to hit is the unlearned, unscriptural authority of the denominational heads and their committee being put together and training them rituals rather than reality causing them not to wake up to the word of God but causing them to understand the rituals of the church in simple terms man-made traditions and they're thinking that is great they're thinking that is right they're thinking that is correct but we know very well what is right and what is wrong because until unless they come and expose themselves in the mirror of the word of God in the original language of the scriptures of Hebrew Greek and Aramaic they can never wake up, they can never think, they can never understand. Even for what they have been kept alive, even though grievance, squelch and lie to the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit.
If the laborer could come and tell for three years it has not given fruit, at least this one year, O oh Lord, give me time, I shall see that this plant will get the fruit. Do you know what Christ our Lord is doing? If we can read Second Timothy, it says, none should perish, but everyone should come to the knowledge of God. It's in First Timothy. And Second Peter 3 and 9, none should perish, but everyone should come to know because of that reason, Lord our God is long-suffering and is forbearing and is waiting. More than that husbandman who went along to wait for three years and he pleaded unto the Lord, give me one more year. And how can we get fruit unto Christ our Lord in this church age? You can get fruit to Christ our Lord in this church age by abiding in Christ. And Ephesians 3, 16 and 17 teaches to us, Christ our Lord may dwell in your hearts, being rooted and grounded in love. And where is your abiding today? You don't even know how many books are there in the Bible. You don't even know what are the right terms of dispensations. You don't even know that you have been indwelled by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, so that you cannot be more worse than your elder sisters. And when we read about the sister of elder one, in Ezekiel chapter 23, piercing our heart to tell those words. You shall suck all the milk, dry it out. And you can even pull away thy breasts at the word. And by that we mean the greater danger what this church age is doing to the church itself. Depriving, being a traitor. The cup which Aloha left, maybe the translators couldn't have enough guts to translate it accurately. But looking upon in the allegorical method, comparing to a woman's breast, sucking out the every milk of it, leaving it, leaving it dry, and in fact even pulling out the breasts of hers. And comparison to the church age, now the Israelites, what they have left out, even the wrath and the filthiness, what they have stopped, more worse than that they're doing because they're grieving and squelching and not get the Holy Spirit of Jinwells in them and lying to him. The Israelites did not having the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, indwelling in them. But right now in the church age, indwelling, being permanent in you and being called for you to the glory of Lord. Yet you do that, the remaining work of the Israelites as well in the flesh, the more worse things what they have been left out in the cup of hers. And do you know who are sucking that milk to dry it out? The pastors. Not able to distinguish between the permanent spiritual gifts and the temporal spiritual gifts. Not able to teach them the bona fide duty of the pastor teacher of the completion of canon. Daily graduating them from the word of God and training them up in the word of God and causing them to understand the word of God. The main root cause. Coming to the church, being kleptes, thieves and robbers, lestes. Coming to the church as misthotes, hired servants. Coming to the church as thupas, arrogant men who don't want to change and daily teach the word of God, having their excuses to sell, to tell so silly it would stand for you at the judgment seat of Christ whenever you could judge yourself. And you can attest to that fact, the reasons what you are telling are silly or not. In a program of yesterday where it was for youth, the pastor of the church proclaims, all week the children strain, they have much more burden subjects now. They cannot come. They want to take their time after the first sermon. They want to go and rest. If they rest, they will rust. And this silly excuses given by the pastor will be answerable for him at the judgment seat of Christ. He will not know now, he shall come to know hereafter the things what he is doing. Your alibis, your excuses, your children reasons for which not coming to the class every day, for not growing up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine and not training them up to the work of the Lord to carry his yoke. And to further enhance 1 Timothy 4, 12. Living behind a great example in the midst of this angelic conflict among unbelievers. Further, you can come to the family of God, the royal family among the believers. 
besides all of these things you have been told. The way how they have been perishing, the way how they have to be and how they are not. For which reason you are applicable for that to tell to the Lord. Your relatives are your own brainchild in imaginations. If the pastor could train them up in the fear of the Lord, making the youth to be the next pillars for the church, and training them up by passing down the torch as Apostle Paul passed the torch to Timothy, they will find such reasons. They will come out with such reasons. And pastors are the greatest culprits today in our pulpits, who don't teach the Word of God every day who are not even buried with the burden of the word of God the way they have been perished. How will they come and stand in the presence of the Lord to fulfill the work of what Jeremiah did in 26th chapter of Jeremiah verse 2? Diminished not a word. He went along to tell every word which the Lord God gave him to speak. And we have now the completed canon of scripture. We cannot be called as a foretelling prophets. We are being called as a foretelling prophets. When we understand the entire concept and the entire counsel of God and we come there here to teach them. The New Testament prophets are different from the Old Testament prophets. We are here to tell them Deuteronomy 29, 29, the things that have been revealed for us in this earth. But the church age is even sucking out the blood from the breast of the Old Testament to fulfill even their wrath of the Lord abiding upon them. If Leviticus 26 and if Deuteronomy 28, the way how they have drunk a cup of them and left the other one to the anger sister, if you can find. If Deuteronomy 20, 28 and Leviticus 26 was the reason for them to go along into fifth cycle of disciplines. And if they, if they would have drunk the remaining part of that milk as well from the Israelite itself, it would be greater, greater, greater punishment than them. Exemplified by the prophets. But rather unwritten in love coming from Isaiah chapter 40 to teach them to become a voice in the wilderness to tell them the truth. And turning their cursing into blessing to follow the word of the Lord to be available for Christ. And ending up in Isaiah chapter 66 telling to them to be aware how they shall be like dead corpuses being burnt in the fire. Our Lord, our God knew they were, rent, they were stopped to drink the milk of the remaining wrath of the Lord. By the deeds they would have continued. Exemplified in Deuteronomy 28, Leviticus 26. The five cycles of disciplines further by the prophets telling to them their failure, what will happen to them if they don't go to even to the Babylon captivity. And we have the history records to prove what it went along during the siege. Having their own daughters killed, sons killed, being raped, being ravaged. Eating the leather, eating the things of their own son's flesh. And yet we come over here in the church age. Through the sister Rahiloba. And she has been told. The remaining thing which the cup of wrath was been left undone, you are drinking it. Yes, we are indeed. We grieve at each and every step. Lord God, the Holy Spirit indwelling in us. We squelch and we absolutely lie unto Him. But yet our Lord, our God remains abiding faithful to us because the filling ministry is temporary, but the indwelling ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit being permanent, yet He comes with grace and love. He comes with grace for you to teach. To give you more humble grace so that you can correct your paths, correct your ways and amen to the word of the Lord. And he trains you up to daily teach the word of God. Though the death works in us but life in you. Though the outward man perishes, inward man to be renewed every day. That's what you have been called. That's what you have been told. That's what you have been chosen. Not to drink the leftover cup of aloha. And already now we can find you are drying out and absolutely draining out every milk that has been produced in the breast of your elder sister and in return you are squeezing their blood as well by pulling out the breasts which have been given to you. And by that we mean when Ephesians chapter 4 it writes about the things what they do in darkness it's not even worthy to speak and those things have been done by the so-called church age believing pastors. Forget about the fellowship of those 
false pastor teachers being equivalent to the idols of the church. When you find in unbelievers the way they act, not only besides Baal, even in my country, India, where they sacrifice a human being to tell there is no rain, so we need to get rain. The human sacrifice being greatest in each and every and corner of the world, except where there is a light of the word of God. And as such, the survey wherewith we can find for the Britain, in one of the RT news channel he covers long back, maybe six or eight months back, by 2020, there will be less than 40% of Christians in that great country, which was a revival movement for the word of God. The great England. Why and what is the reason? Because less than 40% in the sense, more than 60% of the people will be Islamites. And we don't deny that they have to grow up. Let them grow up. But we are coming to make your point to understand once which the country was for the word of God daily teaching with proper exegesis and isagogics through those faithful ministers who have even written the biblical treasury by William Kelly edited. And prior to that in the 17th and 18th century William Carey who came along. Such great men who have been the great work of the word of the Lord whose duty was to daily teach, daily teach, daily teach and exegete the word of God. Such faithful ministers' work have been erased. Such faithful minister work has been not been no longer existing even in their thoughts. Why will not the country will become Islamite? By 2020, there will be less than 40% of Christians in that so great country which was a origin for the word of God. After the 15th century, the Germany took along. After the Germany, the England took along. By producing such faithful brethren ministry through the Plymouth brethren as well, and they went along to produce great pastors and great teachers, to use the word but specifically pastor teachers. William Kelly, Jan Darby, C. H. McIntosh, and how many of them who have written those things, pretending to be true enough for the word of God. And from there developing in the 19th century, the one who has been called as C.S. Schofield. And in the 1915th century, when we come along to read upon the Dallas Theological Seminary by Lewis Perry Chaffer, and faithful men who come along till to the 2000 years of this earth, wherever the word of God has not been properly revealed, there the people have perished. And do you not think the spirit of Lord our God is the same which was been there from the creation of the earth and going along to the renovation of the word of God from that time till now it is the same if it was there the same in Lord our Savior Jesus Christ it is the same in you. It is the same it was the same in Apostle Paul it is the same in you if you are having yet your breath in his nostrils on this earth to witness for this truth because Christ our Lord has authority over the flesh there could be nothing that can go against the word of God. Because the indwelling mentoring ministry is greater than in one in us than the one who is in this world. Now why do you worry about your cults? Why do you worry about your orphans? Why do you worry about your money? Such great infallible and ignorant word of God is our life. And we are here to give the glory which is due unto our Lord before the foundation of this earth. By daily becoming once again biblical oriented pulpit pastor teachers oriented to the authority of the word of God not oriented to the authority of your visions and dreams and growing yourselves to be the Pentecostal realms working out non-doctrinal miracles and healings and speaking in tongues and in order to wake them up to this reality it is our work as such where the church age is ending up we do not know when is the rapture yet but yet we fail to be witnesses for the truth. Using false inspirations from false pastor teachers to tell that a Christian can never be a failure. But showing them through the videos that a man was failure for so many years and later on he become to produce in a year 23 billion dollars his turnover all over the world. So what? What does the money make to you any difference? Do you not know what the word of God tells to us? You are not of this world, therefore the world will not receive you. And we are of the world of heaven, then the world should certainly receive the word of God by our lives as long as we are here on this earth to be the light and salt of this earth. Then why do you worry about your failure things? 
Because we can do through Christ our Lord all things He has provided for us to do. It is He who is, who is preeminent in us. It is He who is going to control us. It is He who is going to apprehend us for His work. When we walk according to the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and according to His rule, then why do we worry about the silly things, stupid things, the things which the earth will perish of, the things which the Word of God has been told for us not to love, not to taste, not to handle, but yet you love, you are in your old sin nature of your lustful patterns to do those things, and you are happy for that. And some men are in a stagnant point. They do not know why they come to the ministry as well. If at all a minister is coming to the pulpit, he has to be first prepared. Not under the theological seminaries where he goes, but under the KT theology of God. Your knees to be erect in the presence of the Lord, your tongue to be trained as the pen of the ready scribers. Then you can be a minister after being trained over a decade or two decades to handle his word as accurately as it could be. The secret things of our Lord belong to them, to his prophets. And how can Lord our God hate the secret things of his heart, the special revelation of his heart from us? The only requirement for us is to obey his word. The only requirement for us is to be called as our friends in John 15, 14. Only when we shall do according to the will of God the Father to fulfill that for which you have been kept alive on this earth. And if you are not fulfilling that, how can you be called as a friend of God the Father in heaven? Through his dear beloved Son, Christ. In spite of all of these things, Lord our God yet gives you time, grace. You are enjoying yourself to have your physical prosperity to be known. Earlier you were, oh, you were using a bicycle, now you got a car and you are telling that as a testimony. But you are not really enjoying at the cost of grieving and squelching and lying. The indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, how much you are surviving on this earth. We are the royal family of God, being put together a family named in heaven as well as on this earth. And at the cost of grieving and squelching and lying, your parents... Wherewith you call him Abba Father, your mentoring guide of the divine realm, Lord God, the Holy Spirit. You yet wake up to give false witness and you never witness for the truth. The truth being the infallible and inerrant word of God, are you walking according to that? Does your soul reflect according to that? But yet you reflect the things pertaining to miracles, healings and tongues. Go back and search and see your inner mind, your inner soul, how much is absolutely destituted. How much has been fed? Cross check and see, have you at least read in your life once, kneeling down in his presence, the entire word of God, though it might be in your uninspired word, far less you have been called to be as a king and exercise your kingship in the office of peace, in the office of council of peace, mentioned in Zechariah chapter 6, verses 9 through 13, and in that kingship you have to read at least once. And if you taste and see that the Lord is good, you will not only stop writing once, you go along to write in the original language of the scriptures through interlinear word and from there along you come to write in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic until you have your last breath on this life, you kneel down in his presence like an immortal because your work has been given for you to do that and you go on to preach, you go on to master, you go on to do the things and you go on to write, kneeling down, writing, 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 not just reading. Unbelievers will read to find out criticism in it. To find out faults in it. But unbeliever can never read in the original languages of the scriptures, the word of God. He will never pursue to really dig in, to make known and to be absolutely pursued of it. But you as a believer, being a pastor, how many times have you read the Bible in the original languages of the scriptures? Wherever you go, how many times you have the word of God being taught in the original exegesis, isagogics and categories. How many times you have been given the right dispensing technique of dispensations. How many times you have been daily teaching the word of God, morning, one hour, evening, one hour, to complete the Bible from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22-21, the completed canon, the completed counsel of God. But yet you find out yourself to be in the den of thieves. You find out yourself to be calling yourselves 
in the midst of the den of thieves as pastors. In return, you are being the ravenous wolves. What for you want to appoint in the church? For your belly, for your life, for your reasonings. What for you want to be still having in the church? To see your daughter and son pursue your education? To see that at the cost of these people being grieved and squelched, giving them false assurance to be praised as hallelujah, and the same people how they cried out to crucify him, so is the reason for you at the church church right now to appoint in your churches. You are reasoning them to tell they have been hallelujah, but you will never come to realize they will cry the same thing for you to crucify you because you haven't taught them the entire counsel of God. You haven't taught them the completed canon of scriptures. Who haven't wake up to realize that nothing on this earth is more important for you than to teach and to rightly divide the word of God for which you have been given this burden upon your shoulders. And you shall realize about them when you go back to heaven. And the main culprits who even suck the blood from the breast of your elder sister, which is nothing but Israel, are not only the pastors, even followed by them who call themselves to be like people, like priests. Being thumbed out in our terms as elders and deacons, being thumbed out in our terms that my father has founded the church so I need to follow the things which have been founded by my father and never recognizing the universal father of our Lord God the father in heaven and never able to realize how much they are grieving that Lord God the father for which he has given for us that bona fide gift of the work of our Lord laid down upon our shoulders and above that the help of a paraclete guide which has been given for us in rightly dividing the word of the Lord the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit and falsely assuming yourself that the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit and its baptism is to go along to do your miracles, healings and tongues and gibberishly jump along and dance along and talk along in your emotional ecstasies of gibberishly calling, not even known that the fulfillment of Isaiah has been done from AD 30 to AD 70 and those 40 years of evangelism through the doctrinal miracle told for them through these people, they shall be letting known that this is Christ our Lord and for the mission for which he has been kept. And now being in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Recognizing his deity through the Lord. Recognizing his work through the humanity Jesus. And for the commission for which he has kept being anointed through Christ. He wants to make our heart in us. So for the commission you need to put on Christ. And if you have put on Christ you shall not fulfill the lustful patterns of the old sin nature. And that Christ which has been put upon you, you have been told to witness for the things pertaining to be like Job as an individual believer, for the things pertaining to be for your minister in the priesthood, for the things pertaining to be witnesses, witnesses, witnesses of our Lord. Luke 24, 48 and 49. And the problem is, they love to put on Christ only when they can see a miracle. When they can gibberishly dump, jump along and dance along and talking along in tongues by the Engrashtamuta's demons, control their vocal cords. But never they realize by faith alone in Christ alone they have been separated to be saints to the Lord. Never they realize if at all they want to take baptism that they are ready to sign a card to tell, yes, we will die like a martyr to my Christ, my Lord. Earlier my life had no meaning, but now I have a meaningful life to witness the truth on this earth into the uttermost parts of the world, following William Carey, following David Livingston, and no matter how our Lord has assigned through Elijah, when we read in Second Kings, like that, we go along for our Lord to be the great ambassadors to Christ, and that's the reason we take baptism in our law. And the reason after taking baptism in our Lord, we put on Christ, prepared for the battle, sowing the seed of the word of God, becoming light and salt to this earth, teaching and training them up for the mind of Christ, going to the missionary places where you do not know their language like William Carey did and translated the Bible into more than 26 languages of my country. 
You're going there to learn the word of God, their languages and training them up and showing them the light. And there are many people in this earth yet that do not know the importance of the original language of the scriptures for which they have been given this inerrant ability, the great inerrant ability of Hooper Ekparosus, besides Hooper Panta for every believer and the special ability for everyone given to them so that they cannot be stopped in the work of Christ our Lord. A saint to God is not a one who will stop. Yet there are many people who don't believe about this thing. They do not even know the way how the time has been clocking out. And we have been called to purchase the time in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. The Kairos moments in the Corona's time. Yet they love to spend the time in the old sin nature by grieving and squelching and lying. How can they be like Christ on this earth? And the sad part is, we find pastors preaching, but they preach what they don't do. The Word of God tells you, preach what you have done, what you do practically. To exercise your kingship, it is a must that you should write, not even once, but for more than once, that is three times. The sevenfold, what you have to pay back, that you steal from the law. The sevenfold, what we need to pay back. Likewise, the multitude of stars which could be counted, so should be the glory of Lord when you go back home. The seven represents the perfect number. Therefore, we read in the Proverbs, if they have any are steal food from you, ask him to pay them back, sevenfold. We are stealing the word of God. Are we paying him back sevenfold? You don't even read the Bible once, far less you write the Bible once, and I demand to write the Bible not just once but thrice. When you write in the interlinear, it is as good as your writing four times. The Greek, the transliteration, and the translation of it, and what the possible meaning could be four times. So four plus one, five. And furthermore, you come over here in writing the original Greek and Hebrew, the sixth time, and once again you emphasize them and you write the seventh time. far less you can think you're reading the Bible and that's enough. Why we emphasize to write? Because that's the word of God told for us to be kings. And Deuteronomy 17, 18 teaches the kingship. He has to write a copy of the law if that was there for the time when the Israelites king could come and judge over the Lord, judge over the Lord's people according to his wisdom, according to the power of God. They should have that copy of law in their hands, constantly worrying about Leviticus 26, constantly worrying about Deuteronomy 28. The five cycles of discipline mentioned for them. Constantly seeking upon Leviticus 6.13 to tell the fire of the Lord should be burning every time upon the altar. The undying devotedness of Christ, if that has been mentioned in the past, now in Romans chapter 12 we have been told to enjoy the grace gift of our Lord so that we can produce our lives as a living sacrifice unto Christ by the renovation of our thinking. And that which is good, that which is perfect, and that which is acceptable in the sight of God, because of the gracious gift given to you, you need to enjoy that. Only those five books mention so much of importance for the Israelites. We have the completed kind of scriptures. The further cursings when the people went along astray, apart from the five cycles of discipline. Giving a overview of the future millennium, giving a overview of the tribulation, what will happen? And yet they were men that did not learn about these things. And we are the failures of that. Taking out in the first advent, sandwiched in the, between the first and the second advent, the church age. And giving to us the completed kind of scripture. And calling us for yourself now to write at least once from Genesis 1-1 so that you can know your history. Because with those people you are going to be in the heaven again so that you can be getting to comprehend among all the saints. To apprehend, to be more specific. And not only that, besides being apprehended, you need to be a witnesses, witnesses, witnesses for this truth. Have you at least read the Bible? If you are not able to read, make up your point to read at least John chapter verses 13 through 17, the doctrine for the church age. You will find the pain and the prayer where our Lord kept for us that we shall keep his word and we have kept thy word. How can you keep the word? 
If everything has been written in the Bible, whether you believe it or not, it shall come to pass. There is no need for us to put lad upon you. There is no need to put for us a convincing point of thoughts upon you. You accept it, you believe it, or you take it or not. It is purely your privacy of matter, strictly your privacy of matter. Whether you listen to this tape or not, it is strictly the privacy of your matter. I am not worrying to have a compete with my peers. Those are contemporary with me right around the world. I am not even worried whether they love me, take me or not to the word of God. I am not even worried about my the food from where I get. I am worried about one thing, answerable to God. Much is given for us and much is expected from us. And if we don't pay back to our Lord the glory and declare his name as our Lord Christ, our Lord saves for us, I have declared and again I am going to declare. Emphasizing two times in the last verse of John chapter 17. It should prick our heart to teach. Are we teaching them the entire counsel of God from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21 in the time best award for you? If Apostle Paul could do that in three and a half years by daily rigorously training them up, then how many years more you want to stay in your church to be as a pastor and not train them up? The first declaration three and a half years. The second declaration another three and a half years. Remember we are dealing with the word of God, not with the personal things of our life. We are not dealing with the things pertaining to the world, the political affairs, thinking that the church and the politics can go together, throw them apart. The only politics that could run over here in the church is the polity of privileges given for them to be the heavenly citizens. The entire canon of scripture is your duty to witness. The entire kind of scripture is your privilege to know and to fulfill the way how the Pharisees and scribes, they were writers of the word of God. Yet they misthought the word of God, but now you have been called even to refute them back and answer to tell, yes, as a believing priest, as a believing king in my Lord, to do the work of an effective ambassadorship, I wrote the Bible and I understood from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 22, 21, and when I have tasted it, I have even written sevenfold time. At the judgment seat of Christ, the Pharisees and the scribes should not shout their voice to tell. Though you are given the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and you have told those who fear unto thee, O Lord, you are going to give them a special revolution, and you have told them to be kings, and they have to write at least once the Bible, and they haven't even written, such should not be the comments by the Pharisees and scribes when they stand to you, against you, at the judgment seat of Christ. And those kings who have been there from Saul till to the last one, Maybe who have written that we do not know. Who have written that from the Levites and taken a copy of it to sit upon the throne of the word of God and to reel them. How many of them they have written to be kings we do not know. Except the reformation being brought by Joshua when he tells Joshua king. Not Joshua but Jehoshua. To rent his clothes and to see what the word of God was there and he pulled down all the people to learn about that and to teach about that. But whether he has written that or not, we do not know. But now we have been given the entire counsel in our mind. To be the mind of Christ, to judge ourselves and to know, to attest to the fact whether have you really become the word of God, have you really become the word to the people as Colossians 4, 6 teaches to us, have you become really the light and the salt of this earth. Those things you need to answer back to the Lord. Neither I'm answerable to you, I'm answerable to my Christ. And Lord our God properly trains us as He trained Christ our Lord in His flesh. My will is to do Father's will, my meat is to do His work. I enjoy in that work. I'm not worried about any other things apart from the work of the Lord. And he went along to do that. The same pattern left on for us. The glory which is due unto the Lord before the foundation of the world. He paid back and we need to pay them back the same things. If that is not been done, then I think this Baltimore privileges have not been given. Have not, have not to be necessary for us.
Yet in spite of all of these things, the counsel of God determines that every believer should have this polity of privileges for them bestowed at the moment of salvation by faith alone in Christ alone. And the reason for which they have been bestowed, many sons unto glory to be called. And the right thing for them to be trained, even the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher, only to a male believer, never to a female. Female is not given authority to have over the men. She may be in her own terms, in her own field, in her own area or arena. Never to have authority over the men who are sitting in the pews. That's a strict disorder, an insult to the word of God. And we have been called to witness for this truth. Not to entertain, but to see anything that is against the mind of Christ, to pull them down and get back into thought of captivity for Christ. Not showing forth their will, not showing forth our will, but interposing them to understand the will of God, the word of God, the truth and the ministry of Bible doctrine. And when you go back, what do you have to show forth the fruits? Bearing much fruit in Christ, where you? Or where you that fourth year, though didn't get fruit in Luke chapter 3 when we read, cut out and put into your works, not being equivalent to the word of God, but in return telling to us, would they and stubble to be burnt off? The glory which is due unto our Lord before the foundation of the world, we need to pay it back. And if you're not doing that, you're answerable to Christ, my Lord, my Savior, besides these great things which have been given to you, the Paltima privileges. Besides these Paltima privileges, you are drinking the cup of your elder sister, Israel, Aloha. Drying out the milk in her breast, pulling away her breast, and taking in out the blood from her breast. By that I mean the way how you are grieving and squelching and lying to the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, by doing your wickedness greater, being greater than Pharaoh, who never believed, being greater than Simon, who at least changed, whether he repented or not, we do not know, but he was been warned that his heart was not right in the sight of God. Yet coming to the ministry for money. And yet there are men who still love to be like Simon's. Yet there are men who love to be like the things pertaining to be in the realm of their old sin nature, raining, 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 and squeeze the milk by their wickedness of their heart. The constant battle between a believer who has to be a disciple believer in the Lord, the constant battle between the one who is just a nominal Christian will be switched from Jeremiah 17 9, the heart being deceitful above all things. But Christ our Lord judges those heart, and if he's a true disciple believer, he will be like Jeremiah 15:16. The words were found, O Lord, and I ate them. That will be the right testimony. We are not here to please others, to impress others. Neither we are here to be pleased by others. When they could appreciate telling what a message it was. Not to us, O Lord. The glory belongs to our Lord, our God. What are we? We are only mud. What is the mind of men? accept mud, his thoughts being vain, less than nothing, vanity, not even equivalent to the dust upon the scales. What does he think and he can receive appreciation? Do you not know Acts chapter 12 teaches to us that Herod, when he did not give glory unto the Lord, he was being taken to be eaten by the worms being put down to death. How can we dare enough even to take the glory that belongs to our Lord? Far less you wake up to understand the glory that which has to be to the Lord, you are nullifying it on this earth. You are squeezing it out. 
not only drying the milk, but in fact even squeezing the blood. And if you are a believer in the Lord, to grow up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, to see the daily gap is required so that you should not drink the cup which has been left over by the elder sister, that is the Israelites. Then your thinking is right to come the word of God every day. And if you have to ignore and follow your paths to make money out of this ministry by teaching false things, and to see the believers perish, then you are drinking not only just the milk which has been dried out, but you are drinking the blood. Remember about that. The blood which comes from the breast of a woman when you suck even after the milk. And such is the great wrath, referring to the unrighteous deeds of this church age. In spite of giving to you the greatest and the polity of privileges, never been even in the earlier, in the past or in the future, but right now given for us in the completed canon of scripture. You attest yourself for the daily probing of the word of God, which we come and teach in the divine illumination of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, every day. You attest for it. Yet there are many things to come and continue, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated for those who are here without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In order to telling to Lord God the Father that you believe upon my Christ, my Lord, my Saviour. That is the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us is very simple. Believing Christ you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess to know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teacher the greatest merit is to carry Sathon Lagan, herald the word in season out of season because of the diamond from my witnesses wherewith you have been called. The number one diamond from our witnesses in well Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands, and number two diamond from our witnesses, our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brethren, do not worry. Besides nature, the entire angelic host will be our witnesses. But our work is to rightly divide the word of the Lord. So which way you want to go, dear brethren, you decide. Think over these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. Father, we are very grateful and much thankful for this great and unique privilege that was given to fellowship through the word. What else can we do on this earth, O oh Lord, than to glorify Thee before the foundation of the world, that glory which belongs to Thee. In the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, O oh Lord, sanctify us through Thy truth and make us to be a vessels for which Thou hast to receive Thy glory and to be a greatest fearing man on this earth who have reached MGG, being apprehended by Thee, forgetting those things which are behind and looking forward to those things which are ahead. For which reason and cause you have given us this bona fide gift of the pastor teacher, so that it could be a profitable unto all, directly or indirectly. In Christ's matchless, gracious, peerless name we pray, Father. May Lord God the Holy Spirit enlighten in these things. Amen.